So if you go back and you look at Spinbrush, they started off as being this electric toothbrush that was priced at $5. Is that a $50 million business? Is it a $10 million business? Is it a $500 million business? That depends a lot on whether, on whether you go after a niche like children's toothbrushes or whether you go after the entire adult toothbrush market in the US or whether you go after the world toothbrush market and whether you think of yourself as replacing electric toothbrushes or whether you think of yourself as replacing manual toothbrushes. Each one of these combinations results in a very different set of numbers. What they did was they looked at this as being something that is ubiquitous, that everyone in the world should want to use and therefore takes a share of the entire toothbrush market from the world. So they started off by saying, this is a really big opportunity. The investor then looks at that and says, how can I know that you can actually build an electric toothbrush for $1.50 when the competing products are selling at retail at $70, the cheapest product we know of is selling at $25, how could you possibly do it at $1.50? There, what he did was go back and show that his previous business was a business in which you had an electric lollipop that would just turn around. So a lollipop is actually conceptually very similar to a toothbrush. It has a battery, it has a motor, it has a product that you put into your mouth, so it's a food quality product. And that gives customers some degree of confidence that this team has the relationships and the know-how to make a product at this cost. And then there's the, can you attract customers at this rate? And they did the test with the Myers stores to show that they could get per square foot of shelf space, almost 50 times the margins that you would get with a manual toothbrush. That tells you that the retail economics are really attractive. And you look, put these things together and say it's a big market, it could be really feasible. And then the venture capitalist is now willing to say, how much capital will it need for us to get from point A to point B? And it turns out that at a certain size, it becomes really expensive because you've got to go and start advertising. And what his plan was, was that I'm going to take a small amount of capital, a few million dollars, prove this model out completely, and then sell the business to somebody who has the capital to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on advertising. So they eventually sold the business, got about $450 million for it. But that's because all of these pieces fit together really well. That's the dream that an investor is looking for.